another episode of Your Brain on Hops. And this is part three of Buffalo in a Glass. Nice. This is exciting. This is the third episode in which we all feature a beer from Buffalo, a Buffalo brewery, that we like the brewery, we like their beers, and uh, this is exciting. This is, uh, this is going to bring our total to 11 breweries that we have total for, uh, for three episodes. Awesome. So totally. good job, Buffalo. And to kick us off, the first beer that we have <laughs> has a pretty awesome name. <sighs> Uh, it's called Morty's Killing Morty's. Uh, <laughs> I got it at Buffalo, or uh, at uh, Sato Brew Pub, Brew Pub, downtown Buffalo. And on the board, it actually said it was a collaboration with Pressure Drop Brewing as well. It is a New England style IPA, um, pretty pretty decent ABV, somewhere in the mid fives. Forgot exactly what it was. Not too bad, but we're trying it for the first time on the air. Oh, uh, this is um... wow! That is unique for a New England IPA taste. I can't put my finger on it, but it's good. I'm not in control of my taste buds right now. <laughs> There's little Mortys dancing on your tongue. <laughs> I know, and I'm shooting them all. <laughs> what? No, the Mortys are killing the Mortys. Yeah. <laughs> not in my mouth. It's all Rick. just killing Mortys. <laughs> Rick, Rick on Morty crime. Yes. Don't hate on the show, but there's one person of the four of us that doesn't know the show well, meaning I've never watched it. There's just a purging of my taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you wouldn't have said anything... No one would have known. Uh-huh. I'm not going to try and fake no, it. No, I'm staring at that you. That Rick is just so eyes. funny. Like That would just sound <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it did. I just, <laughs> yeah. right? I just dislike you a little bit right now. <laughs> That's okay. I can live with that. It's not hate. It's not no, hate. It's, not <laughs> it's tough Rick love. <laughs> it's because I'm white, isn't it? Wow, we just want their queen. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> don't, don't get Dan started on another thing. <laughs> don't, don't, a whole other episode. I'm kidding. Peace among worlds, dog. <laughs> Tim, that was, a, that was a super Rick thing to say. So <laughs> good. It's like you were channeling Rick. Oh, good. Yeah. Carl! No, oh, different Rick. <laughs> sorry, that was terrible. Tim, take your shit, put it in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> just get it together. Get all your shit. This is going to go very, very fast. I, okay, so the beer, the beer itself, mm-hmm. I have yet to go to Sato. I'm very sad about this because Same here. I have, I don't work, I'm not in the city anymore. Any chances I've had is I, I know, it's not, it's not five minutes from your work. <laughs> no. It's not a three minute walk either. But, no, I mean, it's like a 10 minute walk. No, okay. Five minutes. When, when it was closer, you know, I never got the invite from, you know, said friend <laughs> to come on down and hang out, but, you know, it just kind of hurt, but. You know, think time heals all wounds. <laughs> I'll and, get that. And beers. I yeah, know, beers help a lot. <laughs> beers here heal all wounds. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, this beer is hazy AF. Yes. Oh, yeah. Are we not cursing it, anymore? It Cause almost looks like a, a straight up Talk balls. Pineapple or orange juice. But it tastes so much better. And it's got to be better for you, right? I'm sure it says that somewhere in the label. Yeah, a lot of vitamin B. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I believe in. Yes, there it is. I I, I believe all that. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like not even like orange juice. It's almost like puree. It's so thick. Yeah. So Chris, you've actually been to the brewery. Like your experiences. It's very neat. It's below ground, which is pretty unique in Buffalo. So it's the. the it's a tall build, or well, it's a very tall building, but the restaurant and brew pub is pretty tall, and the top, I don't know, like five feet are actually above ground, so that's where they have some windows. Uh, the rest of it, you go down a couple flights of stairs, and you go down in. Um, they have tables, they have the bar area, uh, and they they do feature the brew pub. It's not like they um they have food there just to have food, but really they want to serve beer, or vice versa, a restaurant that just wants to have their own beer. They really do focus on both. So it's a traditional Japanese-style restaurant. They have uh, yakitori. They have ramen. Great stuff like that. The brew, the brewery part of it, they actually dub themselves a Japanese-Belgium-style brewery. So a lot of their beers will use uh, Belgian yeasts, for example, but maybe do... Uh, 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 culturally works in my head. <laughs> yeah, really. Belgium meets Japan. Tim, I'm looking at you for history. There's got to be a connection somewhere. Between those two? Oh, know. wait, there is. But, oh, wait, let's not talk about that. <laughs> mm. Mm. Time period of Japanese history that they don't they don't even like to go into. <laughs> no, I, I'm a big fan of 
Japanese influence, or and I've never been, but I've heard good things, and they were the probably the first place to bring forth one of my favorite dishes, which is yakitori, and so I the fact that I have not gotten down there has been a very big disappointment, which will be have to be rectified, and I may be showing up there very soon in a full Rick costume. <laughs> <laughs> If this is the beer to expect, I can only imagine how good the food is. I mean, this is really good. I, I love this beer. Yeah, I, I've i mostly had ramen, so the various ramen dishes. Those they have a bunch when there. I was there. But even the uh, the small dishes, the yakitori, that was all great as well. A lot mm. of the ramen dishes are chicken-based instead mm. of pork-based, mm. which is unique as well. So it's a cool twist on it. Cool. I like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I like pork. So are we like saying pork. that there is a... Sato podcast in the future. I hope so. Yeah, definitely. So be prepared for us to be eating on mic. Does this mean I have to make ramen? <laughs> I'm already doing steak and breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would You would need to make ramen. I accept. <laughs> yeah, so the brewery itself is pretty neat. It's in the, uh, I think it's called the Dunn Building in Buffalo. It's, uh, it's right on Pearl Street. Um, actually, either the same block or the same... Like me, two blocks away from where Pearl Street Brewery is, on uh, on Pearl Street, but it's kind of neat. The building itself is uh, it's pretty tall. Um, they make great use of the space inside too, so I, I uh, I've really enjoyed it every time I have gone. Great food, uh, solid beer so far. A lot of the beer too, like I mentioned, they do the uh, the Japanese Belgium uh, mashup beer. A lot of the beers will use. Um, uh, rice or other, I, I guess, lighter Japanese styles, but with a Belgian twist. So, overall, pretty solid. Cool. Nice. Chris, show me what else you've got. I'd like to, Dan, but that's all that I have. But I think it's time to move on to our next beer. Uh, Tim brought the next one. so we're Tim, gonna... show me what you've got. Yes, oh, indeed. Chris, disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> So next up, we're going to be drinking a Berliner Weiss from Woodcock Brothers Brewing. And according to what I found out, at, I was not able to get to the brewery for starters because it's 45 minutes north of even me in North Buffalo. And, you know, taking a two-year-old up there that far and going, what else can I do up here and not knowing? But as we've established, he loves breweries. He does seem to love it. He loves running around them and being creating chaos, which he did at the store I was at anyway. Um, but this is the Woodcock Brothers Berliner Weiss Kumquat. So it's a sour Berliner Weiss with kumquat in it, which I'm very, very curious to try. All right, so I do love the description on their website. I know we go to the, the, their individual websites whenever we talk about a brewery, but it's just a great way to get insight. One crazy idea, two brothers and their awesome wives, one old kick-ass cold storage building in a historic town, and a lot of good beer. That pretty much sums up who we are. They're up in Wilson, New York, which is up near Niagara Falls. But I have never been there. I believe, Dan, you have. I have, and actually one of the episodes that never got released, which, because of audio destruction and quality, um, <laughs> we'll just say that, um, I praise this place. And I will agree with everything they just said on there. Their, the creativity of the beer, and I will say this, their wives are awesome because they gave me a lot of beer at one of the festivals <laughs> when they first started out, and hospitality was amazing. I got to try just full pours of everything and that was really when buffalo was started into the boom of kind of craft breweries were starting you started seeing cbw making a name you saw um i think who was it it was um resurgence was coming out yeah woodcock brothers started coming out and they were starting to show up at festivals and you know people were like oh we have something local that's you know that we can go to and so i just remember sitting at the booth and i'm like "Ooh, what's this and the rest of the night, I think actually Chris was with me, and I just stood in the behind, actually I got to stand behind the booth, and literally I could just turn, and there was just another glass of something else waiting for me, and I was like, this is a good spot to be in right now. <laughs> <laughs> Brewers of Buffalo, if you see Dan at a festival, he will post up at whatever brewery he enjoys most at that festival. It's, it's like, it's like win, winning an award, honestly. Yeah. If by the, for the last half hour, you just have Dan at your booth, you Talking and <laughs> and grabbing new beers. All the, I will admit the last two festivals. Well, no, let's see. Uh, Pressure Drop was uh, Buffalo on Tap. I found them. I was like, "This is it. This is my. This is where I hold my my spot." Um, past years though, uh, the one at the ballpark, it was Flying Monkeys. 
because those guys are absolutely awesome. They're just really cool people um, out of Canada, and, yeah, Woodcock Brothers was another one. So, <laughs> I really hope they keep canning, too, because I was super excited when you... The, I had heard about it from you when you went and told me I was talking about when I was coming to visit from Maryland, and I was saying, oh, I'm going to try Big Ditch when they're opening. I tried Resurgence when they opened. I tried Hamburg. I tried Rusty Nickel. And you said, you know what you got to hit? you got to hit Woodcock Brothers. And I was like, you're making that name up. And he's like, nope. no, no, <laughs> I'm not. And it's they, they make light of it. It's, it's, they make light of the joke, but it's just the name. Yeah. And it's, you know, they're, I think... I'm going to get this wrong. They, I really liked their amber, I think it was, that I had there. But then what really hit them off and that everyone was going for was their um, IPA. The XPA? The, the XPA. Well, the XPA, but which kept changing, and it was really interesting. And there were batches that were everyone had their favorite. There was, like, version 8 was, I think, was the one that stuck out of my head. And then as the numbers went up, everyone kept kind of like, oh, but I like this one. This one is different. Because like, they keep changing the recipe. Hence the XPA, Experimental say, yeah. Pale. Um, it's but, just spelled E-X, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. That's the teacher in me. I'm sorry. Still love the good beer, guys. <laughs> just accept it. <laughs> no. But uh, a friend of ours had a uh, bachelor party. Chris and I both went uh, to, and he did a brewery tour. And the first stop was Woodcock Brothers. And they were extraordinarily knowledgeable. On point, their staff, we actually, there was, actually, at the time, I wish I could remember her name, there was one girl working, and she knew everything backwards and forwards. Um, really cool uh, wood-fired pizzas, and just this awesome, rustic, like, building that they had established themselves in. And what I loved was you could sit at the bar, and you looked down on the brewery. You watched them as you sat and drank, just putting everything together. And, you know, and she talked to us about everything. And they, then they, the brewers actually came out, and they even sat down with us for a little bit and even kind of went into it. So I encourage anybody, if they get a chance to go up a little north towards that region, stop by, check them out, had a blast. That was actually kind of neat because... So we had, I think, three or four breweries we planned to get to. And to be fair, this was this was yes. four, four or more years ago. There weren't as many breweries as there are now, and it was kind of spread out. So we wanted to go there. We wanted to go to some breweries in the South Towns. Mm -hmm. uh, we started there, and we, we intended to go be there for an hour, maybe have a flight, maybe have one or two. Uh, we ended up being there for three hours yes. in the morning, <laughs> staying until lunch, having pizzas for lunch there. And, uh, I mean, it was like everyone had a great time. Someone was disappointed. Filled up on growlers before we left. Hmm. So we had growlers for the long bus ride because it was a bachelor party. So we were we had a bus uh, driving us around. Filled up for the bus. Quick um, responsible people. That's right. Or just Always order a, a bus. <laughs> <laughs> Uber. Uber. <laughs> So that was uh, those. That was, was kind of it was an unexpected uh, uh, pleasure going up to Woodcock Brothers that day. Nice. Uh, could you ever imagine if that slogan changed? Not drink responsibly, drive responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> Some places you might have to use that. I love this. Yeah, it's very good. I am it's, getting. It's really light and refreshing, and mm -hmm. I don't necessarily get kumquat. That's but it's the, like that's slightly lemony I'm, to I'm me. Missing. I. I'm missing the, I get the citrus a little bit, I'm getting, but like, when I, like, you eat kumquats as a whole, peel and all, mm -hmm. and I'm missing almost a little bit of that pithy bitterness, that little bit, it's never strong or anything like that, it's actually, but it's still a very refreshing beer. Yeah, the, I mean, the light, it's, I mean, it's such a light tartness in it, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's perfectly refreshing. Yeah. Chris, you're disqualified, go out and buy us some kumquats and we can taste them with it. <laughs> It's been a while. I, the now. only time I've had kumquats was it. out in L.A. <laughs> when, I, when I, I was on a cross-country road trip, um, and we stopped, and they found, everyone in the family that we were staying with figured out I had not tasted many fruits, including <laughs> pears and peaches and many other fruits that most people have had, but I was just so picky, I assumed I wouldn't like them. So the family we were staying with, uh, Dad, he went out and said, okay, be back, went to the grocery store, went to all the fresh fruit, brought everything, including a coconut, which I had for a while because I didn't have the proper tools to open it um, and couldn't do it the whole karate chop thing with my hand tried failed. I didn't have a hammer I didn't think that was right that's how you do it what I just heard was that yeah. his, his brewery traveling son right now as a toddler might have a better 
palate and taste. Of he does. <laughs> Leonard absolutely he, enjoys he way does. more. I eat three different fruits. He eats way more than that. My, my <laughs> takeaway from like that story, <laughs> yep. I really like how you said they figured out. Like, this was a secret you were trying to keep. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, was there. They somehow we found out. She opened that up, including the fact that at that point in time, I had never, because I didn't like the taste of mayo, I had never had mayo on my sandwich before. I don't like, like I'm like, I don't really care for it. Well, I mean, did you have it on a sandwich once and didn't no. like it? Or you just tasted it I out just, of the I taste it. I liked mayo mixed with, like, tuna in a sandwich, but, like, I wouldn't put it on, like, my, like, Laura puts it on, like, a ham sandwich. I'm like, nah, no. Good. So then when we were there, they just, they snuck it on me and put it on there. But anyway, moral of the story is, not moral, but the point is, um, they got me a kumquat, and I'm, they, they figured I was going to hate the thing. And to their shock, I loved it. So then when I saw this was on tap, and I was like, oh, Woodcock Brothers, Western New York, I'm with the Buffalo theme. This tastes pretty delicious. Do you uh, <laughs> do you get kumquat in it? From my distant memory of what it tastes like, because that was back when we take that trip, 2010. I, I think I'm tasting it. Again, it's been a very long time since I've had a kumquat, but I think I'm very, very little. Maybe a little bit more than what you guys are missing, but definitely a little bit. I... I I haven't had a kumquat, so I can't comment on that part. Everything else that we've said about it, I wholeheartedly agree with. The mm-hmm. the, the sourness is just enough. It's uh, pretty restrained, but overall, very very enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, this is a style of beer that a year and a half ago I would have told you I hated, but throughout the course of moving back here and having a couple others before I moved. This Berliner Weiss style is growing on me. Well, Tim, as, so I told you to go to what I thought was a fantastic brewery, and you did. Well, you brought back a beer from this brewery, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say something that I don't think I've said before about a Berliner. May I have some more? <laughs> sure. <laughs> No, just, just I don't, I'm not, I, I won't say I'm not a fan, it's just a matter of, I just, it's, they're far, few and far between that when I can come across something that I truly enjoy. Yes. I think, because uh, you don't really care for sour either? I like the taste of sour, but I like balanced, and it's, a lot of the things I end up getting, it just, I think I don't get enjoyable, or I can't, I can't drink more than uh, five ounce without... Like my mouth and jaw hurting, and I get that lemonade mouth, and you know I'm just like I need something else, and it's so the fact that I'm like I kind of like this. I know I like more. <laughs> I know I've said it on the podcast at least once, but I I feel like Berliner and and Goza mm-hmm. both are supposed to be a light tartness, a light sourness. It's not supposed to, to get, punch you in the no. face. I feel like some breweries just say, oh, it's a sour, so let's make it sour. Mm-hmm. And well, then don't watch how much acid they're actually getting in the beer. Don't most Berliners also take a syrup to go with it? Yes, but I think with, uh, uh, with the kumquat... You're having I'm, a fruit already. Right, because I was thinking that at first, they... too, when I first started sipping it, I was like... This, I don't really get the kumquat. It comes across more as a standard Berliner, and I could see a good, uh, I think the, the traditional is a Woodruff syrup. Woodruff, um, that's what or, I think it was. Uh, cherry, cherry. Or, I've heard cherry, raspberry. Yeah. Uh, but usually... I don't know when it syrup. comes down to it, you could make a kumquat syrup yeah. to, to spike this with. I, uh, I really like the look of this beer, too, because uh, mm-hmm. up top, you have, uh, you have decent carbonation. It's a good head on it. But then when you look at the body, it almost reminds me of a very refreshing white wine. I was just thinking, as soon as I just put it down, I'm like, white wine. Not the taste of one. <laughs> no, definitely not the taste of one. <laughs> but the look, for sure. <laughs> she shorted us. Mm-hmm. Did she even put it in there? <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna if be, I get it's going to be another Aaron gr- crawler. It's a Pepsi. <laughs> fucking Aaron. Nope. Oh, love Please. you, buddy. Shout out to Aaron, 42. Give me the fucking water. So on to the next brewery. Um, we are we are going from one Berliner right to another Berliner. Um, this one is from Twelve Gates in Williamsville, and this is a strawberry rhubarb Berliner Weiss. Fubarb. 
Foobarb. I love that name. On the side of that crawler, do I spy 3%? Yes. It is only 3% and only 4 IBUs. This is my four IBU. favorite four IBUs. Berliner Weiss I've ever. This is awesome. <laughs> Tim's a slight shot. Holy Tim God. has been won over by Berliner Weisses today. Wow. Apparently. <laughs> Kudos to Woodcock Brothers and 12 Gates. Oh my God, this is awesome. There's definitely a, uh, a sweetness in there. I will mm-hmm. say I hate the ta- the texture of strawberries. I've always loved the flavor. What's As you'll find out, I don't. I'm a big, weird, complicated eater. But this is delectable. Who hates the texture? It's just they're allergic. It's all food. seedy and weird. It's true. It is seedy. <laughs> yeah. Not as never seedy as like, seeds like of raspberries, strawberries. though. I don't do raspberries either. Never... Grapes, apples, bananas. That's it. See, my issue my issue with the seeds and that raspberries, orange? blackberries, things Ugh. like that, is I think it's stuck in your teeth. <laughs> Strawberry <laughs> seeds don't. Pulp. It's gross. Pulp is not gross. It's no, disgusting. he just said an orange. Who won't eat an orange? I'm no. like, really? Grapefruit, oranges, lemons, limes, anything citrusy. Which is ironic because I love citrusy, <laughs> I, like hopped IPAs. You understand but, what you're saying. Yes. Well, flavor is different than texture of a fruit, though. Like, I love cherry. I, I mean, my, my first craft wheat? beers were the cherry wheats. I don't like eating cherries. You're an enigma to me. <laughs> so, wait, you said grape, banana, and... Apples. Love apples. apples. Now, apples is one of the fruits that I, I enjoy in basically every form, though. Like, banana candy sucks. Anything that's, like, sour apple or anything kind of candy. What about awesome. banana stouts? Do you like those? Yes. Like that, uh, who makes that? Uh, Bells? Well, no, Bells? Wells? Wells. Wells. I'm like, I know it's an E-L-L. <laughs> yeah, they make a really good banana bread. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah that's really good. You like that kumquats? <laughs> yes, kumquat. There you go. <laughs> Hard to is. come by. That's not what a typical kiwi? fruit you have. No. No? Yeah, that was another one they forced on me in California. Watermelon? Nope. Another yeah. texture one. I love watermelon. Um, if we weren't doing a Buffalo in the Glass series, I would name this episode Tim Hates Fruit. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. but that's what we should name the next video of us forcing him to eat a lot of different <laughs> fruit. <laughs> no, no, not eat a lot of fruit. Drink a lot of beers containing different fruits. Both. Mm. Both. We'll have we'll have the fruit and then we'll have a, fe- a beer feature beer. in that, that I'll fruit. be absent that day. We'll, we'll get uh, we'll get the the disgusted reaction, then we'll get the delighted reaction. <laughs> I like it. This Here's is gonna a cherry. be fun for oh, us. gross. Here's a cherry beer. The awesome. <laughs> banana stout, uh, the watermelon from Twenty First Amendment, and more of this twelve. Yeah. Cher- we'll bring back his rhubarb. favorite cherry wheat, even. Oh god. Actually, uh, New, York, New York Beer Project does a watermelon goza, mm. which, I've which had. is it's really good. Says. Again. I like fruit flavor. It's and 12 Gates, actually, know. if we kept it local, 12 Gates does do their cherry wheat. Cherry wheat? Mm-hmm. So does actually, Pearl Street. Has Sato does, doesn't cherry. Sato do a peach flavor beer? We're going to give you fruit salad in alcoholic form. <laughs> <laughs> I could eat that. Fruit salad is the name of the title. <laughs> but before you can drink the beer, you have to eat the fruit. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> And, and but that doesn't apply to the rest of us because we like the fruit anyway. <laughs> so you're gonna see us oh, drinking God. the beer, and that's gonna force I you because you're so down on a watermelon. I, we ha- so Alex and I had this beer, the strawberry rhubarb, at the brewery. Very good. It is mm-hmm. doing that thing though that bothers me with sours. It's making my upper lip stick to my gums like lemonade. <laughs> it's bugging me. You're weird. I can't help but I'm getting that lemonade mouth thing, and I'm like, mm. uh, In other news, I actually went to 12 Gates. It's one of the first ones Laura and I went to with Landon um, after uh, we moved back. And I remember really liking it. We got some sandwiches, excuse me, there, and I forgot what we got, Landon. I think he had chicken finger. No, he had grilled cheese. But, um... And it was mm, it was a nice atmosphere. Cheese. They have a nice outdoor area, area. It's not like an over... It's not like a huge big patio or anything. I don't know what was there when... You guys were there, but they had like a tent up and tables underneath. In the grass? Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't anything over the top, but it was nice. You can go inside, get your beer, order your food, get more beer, and go outside and enjoy. I got a flight, Laura got a pint, and it was really good. I liked it a lot there. What was funny is I didn't know, I didn't realize for whatever reason how close it was to the airport because the airplanes uh. flying overhead terrified my son <laughs> at first. <laughs> we do the whole parent thing where you convince him, how awesome is this? Look at that. It's so cool. And now he loves airplanes and asks for more, which he doesn't <laughs> quite get how that works yet. But um, either way, I did. I liked it there a lot. Um, and the whole flight I had, there wasn't one I didn't like. I It was my... F- we went down. I went down there. This was actually my first experience going to Twelve Gates. Um, we have a friend there who works there, and 
always gotten several invites and I finally made down. One, I didn't realize how actually closer to, I guess, towards me it was. I guess I kept thinking it was farther north. And then secondly, I didn't realize where it truly was and I kind of walked in taken back. I was like, I, ought to, I thought the building was bigger. Because <laughs> I always see the rocking at the gates and I see these big events and I'm like, and I kind of came across, I'm like, I'm very confused. And then I was like, walked in, I was like, eh, beer is good. I was, the venue, I was like, I had an expectation in my head, and I was like, didn't see this coming. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, so so real quick, for all of you listeners um, who haven't been there, just like Dan, until today, <laughs> um, it's at uh, 80 Earhart Drive in Williamsville. And... That's actually like a business park. Yes. So when you're going through the business park, um, there really aren't many signs for 12 gates. I drove um, past it accidentally. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the first time I went there, I drove all the way to the end, and I was like, yeah, I didn't see anything. And I drove all the way back to the other end, and I'm like, I didn't see anything. But then I found it. But you want to know what it did for me? It brought me back to something in my life, which was when I got to go to Hawaii. And... My family was out and about on their sturgeon, and I was left by myself, and and I decided to explore on my own, and I was walking kind of from, there's touristy bars, and I finally sat down on one, I was like, all right, and of course, every single one of them is doing Kona Brewing, which is AB and Bev now, and this guy has me this beer, and he goes, oh, you really like beer, and I said, yes, so he goes, well, this is actually brewed just on the island, there go seven blocks this way and kind of make a right and go like another three and they're in this industrial park so i just started walking (laughs) while my family was doing this random tour and i found the local brewery in town and i just kind of walked into this industrial district and sure as shit there's this giant silos of you know their grain and they're just and i'm like holy crap and it's that's exactly what 12 gates reminded me of i'm like kind of this little hidden gem tucked away amongst the hoopla of what was going around, I'm like, I found my happy place on this trip. <laughs> Hoopla, is that, is that, is that Yiddish? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think it is, actually. <laughs> Hoopla. Um, now we'll thing, look it up. <laughs> another thing about 12 Gates that is ironic concerning the two people that are that were there today, there today um, do Words not particularly, tough. they are, do not particularly use uh, untapped all that often because... Um, 12 Gates has an actual affiliation with Untapped as a verified venue, so much such or so that they allow you to, when you check in to beer there at their location, you earn points to get free stuff from the brewery. So, like, my first check-in got me a sticker from 12 Gates. So then if you check in to so many other beers at their location, you get you can get a T-shirt or a gift certificate or... Um, a free beer and stuff like that, which I thought was really a cool way to use Untapped. Yeah. To Other venues should try that and yeah. do it right. It, Absolutely, it'll work out in their favor. Yeah, kudos to Twelve Gates. Cheers. <coughs> Chris needs needs more beer. Well, good, we're in good luck because we're about to go into another beer as also from Twelve Gates. Also from Twelve Gates. Sure, why not? They also have really cool, I don't have a Jeep, but they have those awesome tire covers that I see mm. around town every now and then. The yeah, 12 gates tire covers. tire's going flat. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was pretty low. I don't think you can stick a tire in the back of a Civic. Well, I, I ran my hand against the back, and I felt this chunk of rubber. I was like, that seems loose. Is there a chunk of rubber coming out of the sidewall of my tire? And then I got down, I looked underneath, I'm like, no, I think I just felt the lettering on the other side of the tire. <laughs> PSA, everyone. Check your tire pressure. <laughs> yeah, when I checked mine, it was at 11. <laughs> <laughs> wow. PSA, everyone. Don't drive with 11 tire pressure. <laughs> I need a napkin because apparently I'm a child. And I can't pour. Dun, 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 dun. You can leave that in. <laughs> By the way, idea that bars should have or should definitely start using is crawlers at random at bars, not just breweries. I think it's an awesome. I think Ebenezer Alehouse does it. I think crawlers are great because crawlers are awesome too, but they're expensive and it doesn't always. You, I feel like you can keep crawlers longer and they stay better longer. 
You know, Tim, there's an excellent thing to help you with keeping them colder longer. And it's a wonderful koozie made by the people of Traveling Growler. I, what is Traveling Growler, Dan? Please elaborate. Oh, Alex, you tell me. Well, Dan and Tim, uh, they are made out of a high-grade neoprene, which is scoop material. So it's actually going to insulate your growler and keep it cold on your table for up to an hour and a half. So I can go scuba diving with my beer? You can. Awesome. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> you could. It won't keep it cold, though. <laughs> nah, I think Tim asked, that was the first time I wanted to go scuba diving. <laughs> Have we ever tested one of these? Will it float? Can it work on one of these? Uh, with a empty growler in it, it does. <laughs> I floated two in my pool, and then... Uh, you filled them in the second And yeah. then uh, I actually f- uh, photoshopped a, s- a shark under it for Shark Week. Ah. Uh, check out the Traveling Growler Instagram to see that picture. Many cool designs and that you can choose from. From There was a St. Paddy's Day to Patriotic to Peace and Love to Buffalo Bills. And, and Buffalo with hops on it. At, that was my favorite. As well as... Your brain on hops. <laughs> yeah. You want to support the podcast and keep your growler nice and cool? Buy our shit! <laughs> <laughs> the podcast may be free, but the operation is not. <laughs> also, if you see Alex out at a beer festival anywhere, odds are it's going to be warm outside, unless it's one of the few winter festivals that Buffalo has. But if you do see him, ask him about it, because I'll tell you, at, at being at a beer festival, grabbing a koozie for your glass instead of warming up the glass the entire day, it is pretty useful. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we don't just carry uh, koozies for growlers. We also have regular can koozies um, that fit on multiple size cans because neoprene stretches. So it'll stretch to fit cans. Or the other one we have is a solo cup sleeve or a pint glass sleeve. Mm-hmm. It slides right up. There's no bottom on it, so it doesn't like get that weird thing at the bottom when you're trying to squeeze your can koozie onto a glass but because it's also sh- it's also cut at the bottom for it so you can fit that pint glass in the exactly. conical shape will also fit around a tulip we've noticed a and tulip it goblets it fits around a lot of things um the protein shakers that people uh, use right. to for protein shakes after their workouts i put it on there it's like uh yoga pants for whatever kind of curves your beer glass has that's right <laughs> You just made a sexy ad. That's a very good simile. <laughs> so, Tim, I, I quite agree with you. I'm a huge fan of crawlers. Yeah. Any awesome. any place that has a crawler, like, A, you don't have to remember to bring your own. Mm-hmm. Because for any beer lover, you, you're going to accumulate growlers of various sizes very quickly. I have probably 7 to 10 64-ounce growlers, eight probably just as many 32-ounce growlers. They just start to accumulate. So you don't want to have to buy a growler every time you want beer. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're out, you don't have a growler on you, get, being able to get a crawler, fantastic Perfect. idea. The, mm-hmm. We actually start. so my household, we actually started repurposing all the crawlers I had. Uh, recently, my girlfriend had to go, to, had to set up her, uh, cousins for her cousin's wedding and her bridal shower, she, and she's trying to come up with, and it's a rustic feel, so I'm like, well, here, take these, she saw it on Pinterest, and I had gave her like six growlers and she just started spray painting them all white and she just started putting them in as vases and they looked awesome i was like all right i'm not using them because i've got way too fucking many of these damn mm-hmm. pigs um but the on the side of the also the crawler chris you and i have now both have one and i saved mine from when i was in hawaii and i actually brought it back because it was i just thought this was the greatest thing in the world it's the three can crawler carrying device just freaking great for getting things just getting three individual beers and i got them all the way back to the mainland with this thing and i'm like why does nobody utilize these things more i would buy more beer if i could just walk out in tow with just several i love i love that you brought a a visible prop for an audio podcast (laughs) 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 you know what because you know what not only did so when we went i went to i met alex at 12 gates I brought this with me because I didn't know if I was going to buy something. But Again, I figured, audience, he's pointing to the, the no, crawler one. I'm just holding my hand. But I didn't know if Alex was going to use it. And you know what? Sure shit, he did. So I'm glad I took it with me. <laughs> I appreciated part. it. Thank you. Instead of being a little shit like Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I'm I love grateful. about crawlers is 
One thing I've noticed with just having, typically on a night when I go to a, a brewery, it's usually with my wife, and we'll go back, and we, like, if, we, if there's one we really like, or one that she gives me that look of, I really like this, and I'm like, okay, well, we'll grab it. Um, if I, like Chris mentioned, if we don't have a growler on us, we're kind of out of luck unless we want to buy one, but also just the amount of beer. I love having a steady good amount of beer, but I also sometimes feel rushed to drink a growler fast, whereas a growler, you can drink that in a night, and you're fine. If I try to polish off a growler and say my wife's good for one glass and there's still that much left in a growler and I'm like, God, I got to finish this in a day and a half, probably that day. That's a lot on me and I better not be working the next day. Yeah. Well, then so, you are trying harder. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Good, you know good for you, Tim, because I know people who uh, drink what they can and then dump the rest, but not you. You have too much respect for the beer you're getting a growler of. It's absolutely that. Well, nothing cheers, to sir. do. With the cost factor. Well, you can't. Really, you can't well, at least, not, I don't know if it, it doesn't work too well on the screw caps, but like um, the vacuum, the popper, the, like the uh, pop tops, like the. Like yes, I can't say it because, hey, it's a visual and it's not going to work. This is true. Um, uh, but is that a Grolsch top? A Grolsch top. Kind I of. It's, it's, it's got that rubber seal that actually will, like, yeah. tight. I don't know how well of those. if it will uh, kind of keep that out a little bit. Yeah, um, it, that actually does seal it better than yeah. the screw caps. Um, my favorite thing about crawlers, though, is that there is beer inside. And, <laughs> Speaking of, well, and the beer that is inside water. of this There's one. There's usually beer inside. Usually beer mm-hmm. inside. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> um, but the beer inside of this one is the West Coast Style IPA from yeah, 12 Gates. We've been Gates. drinking this for a while. <laughs> um, this is, I believe this is their flagship. Um, it's brewed with all citra hops and I believe orange peel as well. It tastes a lot more, I mean, I could have had an older can, it was Wegmans, so who knows, but I got a can of this from a crafter on at Wegmans, and it was good, I did not like it, but this tastes much better, probably it's because it was better just, off the draft. yeah, mm-hmm. it's off the, off the draft from the crawler that you ju- you got today, Yep. so, but it's, it's very, I mean, I liked it the first time, and when I was there, I actually had the double dry hop version of this, which was very good, um, but this is also awesome. I, I recommend anybody go down there and check it out because Please they have do. a lot other beers that are on tap that you don't find in the stores, and I think that's where mainly some people see and a variety of styles. Uh, that's what the coffee porter. Yeah, the the coffee wheat. porter I think is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. It's very good. And it's just not porter season right now, so I didn't. We're get getting it. there, Alex. Sure. We're getting to that folly time. Yes, this fall slash winter, that <sighs> that fires. beer will be on the show. Yeah. They Hopefully also they have, will be on the show. They also have yeah. great pizzas. I hmm. saw that flashing across the numerous pictures of on their board of things that they do, and I was like, "Cool." Mean TV? No. Yes. <laughs> that amazing, that amazing device. Um, it's like a magic board. <laughs> it's a magic box that does things. A um, panorama of pixels. It was actually just moving pictures, but. <laughs> um, the. Uh, Please send me that. Um, <laughs> yeah, just their food, uh, flatbreads, t- pizzas, to tacos, which came just sliding across my path, and I was like, I should have gotten some damn tacos. <laughs> That's always that should never be even a thought. Oh, should I was always like, get tacos. Damn, I should have gotten tacos. It's even a Tuesday today. I yeah. know. I know when I had pizza, I didn't make my tacos. It's weird that, that we we turned down Taco Tuesday at Forty Two North to record a podcast. <laughs> but that's not over yet, it's my the, friend. The love it's of true. buffalo beer. It's true. What time is it? <laughs> There's buffalo beer there. <laughs> Actually, speaking of buffalo beer, uh, now that we're nearing the end of our Buffalo in a Glass series, I'm kind of curious sad. about... We are? I'm very fond of this series. Okay. I know. I know it is sad. Oh, as a whole, um, I mean, because we're getting to um, Buffalo Beer Week. That's right. I'm kind of curious about what everyone thought of the beers, uh, kind of most interesting... And uh, or, or even just favorite, if there was a standout favorite. So, normally we would end our show in previous episodes with a what you have been drinking. But we've had so many great beers from our own home. We've been drinking buffalo. Yeah, we've been yes. drinking buffalo. And, you know, just looking, we are literally just looking at a, a, a cornucopia of crowlers, growlers, Good cans... Word, and of things that we've tried, and so we kind of just wanted to lead off of really, truly what our favorites really were. And so I think just starting it off, I guess I'll just look to Alex. Well, how about you? So overall, 
The Bidwell Wild, I think, was my favorite. Um, just because I, the way it was brewed, I thought was extremely interesting. It could have came out in any of a thousand different ways, and it turned out excellent. It was just sour enough for me. Um, There's so many flavors in there. It's so complex. I loved it. Um, it truly was a wild card. <laughs> right, right. It truly was a wild. Um, I would have to say, though, that the... Um, I do really like, I really did like the, uh, rusty nickel slice of Havens. Um, I thought that was delicious and Agreed. we did have a lot of IPAs. I don't know which of those is my favorite though. So this kind of leads into mine, to, to my favorites. I don't have a specific one, but I'd say my top three are uh, on to, well, first of all, to lead in with the IPA, Aqua Buddha. I really enjoyed that, the, the kind of the West Coast style New England IPA. Uh, I've heard some people say that they they didn't like basically the West Coast style being introduced to the hazy, juicy New England IPA, but I loved it. I, I think most beer lovers that have loved IPAs for a while and craft beer for a while, and especially when, like five or six years ago, when West Coast IPAs were so popular, just that resurgence, that, that bit of bite to a juicy New England style IPA. Uh, it was really good. Plus, they executed well on what they were going for, which which was that. So that was one of my, my favorites. The other ones, um, so, uh, well, I really like Bedwell Wild as well. The, not only the beer itself, but the story behind it. The fact that they used uh, fruits from the Bidwell market for their for their ale. That was, uh, that was really neat. And then the peated scotch ale from Rusty Nickel. That was, that was kind of a surprise for me. I, I, I thought... At best, it'll be, okay, well, this is a neat smoked beer. At worst, it'll be, well, that was interesting. Let's move on. But I was very impressed by it. They uh, they executed well. I got peat in the nose, in the body. Um, I was just overall, it's probably one of my favorite scotch ales. I'm going to follow you up with that, and I'm just going to continue. I'm just going around here. That, you know, if I'm going one, two, three, and I'm going to go with my number one favorite was that Rusty Nickel peated scotch ale. Uh, that was my top choice. That hit everything that I personally right now I've been looking for in a beer. My second one, the Old First Ward um, IPA that we got to have. I I be fucking you, a. I, I, you, I, said, I, you said it right. Fuck, I know you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. The IP fucking a. Um, or if you're going there, uh, Hoppy Oasis. Hoppy Oasis. Yes. You also see it on the board is that. My mouth was stumbling a little bit. I was like, Hoppy, it's Hoppy. What the fuck am I saying? And then, you know what? I prefer. That's the word. I, yeah. <laughs> I prefer IP fucking A um, was, was my second choice. And I, you know what? I'm the geek in me. And I hate, I'm going to, you know what? No, I'm, I'm not going to go with the geek culture because of I love my Rick and Marty. I'll, I'll make him my runner up. But you know what? I'm gonna throw my wild card out there, and I'm gonna say I really like that kumquat, Berliner Wise. Mm. That was refreshing. I liked that one. Thank you, Woodcock. Um, I'm gonna throw that out there though that uh, Morty's killing Morty's best name. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. Yes. yes. With, without a doubt, <laughs> best name. I have a doubt, but I haven't watched the show. Well, maybe <laughs> you should. You son of a bitch, Tim. <laughs> I had to say it. I have right. doubts about you. Uh, I, uh, well, I'm just going to make the doubts worse. No, I'm just kidding. I'm actually... So how about you, Tim? All right. Now that I get to talk, no, I'm just kidding. You're back in Buffalo. You I have am. a just a slew of, an onslaught of Buffalo beers now. And this I, is following up you were... on you, sometimes with your wife, sometimes with your child, visiting Buffalo Brewery. So you've had a lot of Buffalo beer since moving back, mm-hmm. and now this series going on where yeah. you've had... You have officially been gangbanged by a... Buffalo oh breweries. God. And I've enjoyed every taste of it. I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to take that. That sounds awkward. But well, you right. took it well. You <laughs> took it all. I did. Um, this has probably been one of the best ways to get back into town. And the pizza we've had, a couple of the recordings, has also been a nice touch. Um, gotta have more wings, though. A wing fest is this weekend. Um, but not maybe not for you. If you're listening to this in your car after we release it, probably not. It probably already happened and you missed it. What's wrong with you? Uh, or or they went. Ones. Yes. Take a listen. Or they went, and they're going to be like, oh, that was good. Yeah, it was. Or if you have a souped-up DeLorean, TARDIS, etc., <laughs> go back, visit the uh, Wingfest. That's true, yeah. All right, so my favorite, and I did three as well. I had a hard time picking just one. Um, the, but top, tip of the top, for me, i got to uh, echo what a lot of you guys have said, the peated scotch from Rusty. 
I never thought when you see it a Scotch Ale, I was like, I've had a bunch of those, and they're always fine. I never love them, I never hate them. But that one, the the smoky, I, I can. It's one of those that I think of the name of it and where it came from, Rusty Nickel, and I just go. I can immediately remember what that tasted like, and it was fantastic, um, which gave me a new excitement for what what's coming next from them because that was just such a good beer. Yeah. And then um, to keep that going with the the Bidwell Wild, I put that on my list from Big Ditch as well. Um, just I, I I love obviously anything local to Buffalo, and just how local they specifically made that beer was so cool. And then, as you could probably guess from my reaction on tonight's episode, the Fubarb from 12 Gates <laughs> makes my top three, because that was just freaking delicious. Um, but not, I mean, I am, above all things, an IPA person, so the Let Me Put You in the Picture IPA from Thin Man, the Aqua Buddha, the IP Fine, and the Mortys, those were all really good, too. So, um, but top of the top, Rusty Nickel, kudos to you. Uh, you get my tip of the cap with your peated scotch ale. That was awesome. Well, on that note, <laughs> I think we say cheers to Buffalo. I'm cheers. looking forward to see what they come up with us. And honestly, guys, we missed so, like we missed some breweries. We know there's some of you out there that we missed your favorite. There's some other people that we want to go to, but we tried to do like three to four breweries that we have not been been to or really mm-hmm. had to go back and re-experience that's a that's a good point special shout out to a couple breweries that we have had actual episodes on like 42 north yes. like pearl street we wanted to expand beyond beers that we feature on the show or have had actual episodes about so True. a if you're new to the show go check out uh some of our previous episodes where we do record at 42 north or feature their beers same thing with pearl street exactly we're excited to go there and you get those breweries are on our are, there's some breweries out there that are on our list, and we will be absolutely there to visit, talk to them, get them back on. Some of them we've actually gotten a chance to sit down with, but the audio didn't come out with people like Windy Brew, Resurgence. That like there, you're. It keeps growing. We're gonna community. Yes, community, community brewers. Community brewers is another one. Which like, I tried to get in fairness, but uh, they didn't have their crawler equipment set up, or they didn't yes. have the, the tubes. They kind of made. So. A, they just made a big move, so there's they not did. much we can do about. But uh, I will be back. Heck, I mean, how many? Breweries does Pearl Street actually own? I think it's another four or five. So, I mean, we can do an episode on that alone. Lafayette Brewing. Um, yeah. The New East Aurora Brewing. R- so, R- real much to check out. Riverworks, one of the Pearl River Street Works. breweries. Exactly. Yeah. But the list goes on and on, and it's only going to get bigger, and we're excited to, s- to see it keep going. Because the more they brew, the more we get to drink, the more you get to hear us, <laughs> and everyone's happy. <laughs> yeah. So on that note, I think we can bid you all adieu. We hope you enjoy Buffalo Beer Week coming up. And on that note, cheers. Go out and visit these breweries, people. Please do. Check them out. Tell them any, It would help us, too, if you tried to tell them, we heard about you on that show, on Your Brain on Hops, and they're doing a good job. We appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just saying, those, those assholes that release a podcast <laughs> said really <laughs> good things about your beer. What the fuck are these so, uh, <laughs> so, They so, mentioned this brewery. So. And speaking of those assholes, uh, like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, uh, Please do. Yes. Uh, the Brand. shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, it's good for business. It is. <laughs> Everyone Brandon hops on Instagram. Facebook, it's your brand on hops. Also, I'll throw out there, um, I'm a regular user on Untapped. If you want to add me on there, I'll gladly add you. If you just say, hey, heard you on the show. Curious what you're drinking. Uh, the username is pretty simple. Tom Cobb. T-O-M-K-O-B. Black Brew. Yeah, a carrot. That we're the only two on Untapped, apparently. Tom. Apparently, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't really use it much. I forget to. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm more so my talking too to people. Much. Yeah. When I get a chance, my, like, man, you just slap me in the face with flavor, which I think, yeah, actually, you no, know, where's my Untapped? I'm going to go put that peanut scotch ale on there. <laughs> <laughs> And I check into pretty much everything I drink, especially if it's the first time I've had it. Sometimes not the second time, unless I realize something different about the beer. Because you always, I mean, that's what's, it's kind of fun. It's like going back to watch a movie you've seen already. You notice other things. Um, unless it's the seventh time you've watched Infinity War in a week because your son is obsessed, which I'm totally cool with. Uh, but beer, you can always notice that subtle aftertaste you didn't get or something on the nose you didn't quite smell the first time. So I love Keep beer. exploring. Yes. <laughs> explore buffalo yes cheers cheers